Okay. Hello, America. Hi, America. Welcome to Off to See the Wizard. Angel and the Wiz. Angel and the Wiz. Who said Off to See the Wizard? <laughs> that was the very first show. It was Off to See the Wizard. Whoa. See? Well, you see, princess. We see. We're, we're, I think we're going political <clears throat> on these next We've been weeks. really good, and I have you, really been biting you've my tongue. You've been really good. Okay. Yes, well, I've been very proud of you. Okay, well, but, I don't want to lose all that ground, but... But it's time to get back to reality. we got to talk about something, because I see something happening, and I'm an American, okay? I'm an honest American. People, I am known for my honesty. Everybody that I deal with, okay? Yes, we know that. Okay. Now, and I, I don't like seeing people manipulated. And I'm seeing people get manipulated. Okay. So we got to talk about this. So, someplace along here, a little town sign is going to come up, and it's going to say, a message to the black community from a fellow American, and that's what this is about. Okay? Now, I'm a die-hard New Yorker. Okay. okay? And I am watching a New Yorker manipulate people uh, and it's no good for them they're manipulating black folks and I and I'm not I'm, I'm not happy with it. I got something that I want you that you can that I want you to read at some point okay because I'm not quite <clears throat> sure what you're talking about well you can find out we're okay. about to get into it okay? okay but first let's set up something so that you know where I'm coming from I understand that if you're black you're very easy to see if you're black, you're easy to see. If you're Asian, you're easy to see. And if you're Hispanic, you're easy to see. Okay? These are very, phys these are, they have physical characteristics, mm -hmm. each group. Okay? But something that the Latins and the Asians don't have, that the blacks have, is that the Latins and the Asians do not have an older generation that tries to manipulate them for their own profit and benefit every time there is, a, there is a, an issue that can be used for that purpose. Okay, so the Latins and the Asians are allowed, while they look different, they've been allowed to just assimilate into society and do things and go along things, and they're never called out onto the street to rally and protest and fight and this, that, and the other thing, okay? Okay, but unfortunately, the black people today, now, I'm old, okay? I've seen the whole you're thing. You're old and you're also not black. That's right. Okay. But let me tell you something. <laughs> I've seen what's happened over the years. We are not living in the 60s. This is 2013 or whenever you see in the show. And the fact of the matter is a lot of the race problems that existed before don't exist now, okay? Nobody's saying it's perfect. You want to know something? Life isn't perfect. Uh -huh. Oh, call the police. It's never going to be perfect. Okay, that's part of the burden, and that everybody has their challenge. You may not believe this, but while blacks have a tendency to stand out, not more than Asians and, and Spanish, but more than, let's say, white Caucasians, but you may not realize it, but the Irish and the Italian and all of those people that came up in America were, were, were bigoted against and discriminated against and couldn't get jobs and couldn't do this, that, and the other. That's true. They had to overcome it. But they didn't have the problem that the blacks have today, which is people that are willing to make money off of you, that are willing to use your strength and your power and your ability to be used for their benefit. Let's go into it, folks, okay? And this is what I'm talking about. I'm from New York. There is a guy that comes from New York that is a despicable human being, okay? He lied, he cheated, he got people killed, under different circumstances, he would be in jail now. He wouldn't be running around free. He wouldn't be on TV with his own show. Now, maybe he's on a network that nobody watches, but he's still there. And when he calls people out to, to protest, in this particular instance, they were using it against, uh, in the Zimmerman trial, and we could talk, we could talk about that too. I'm going to come back to that. Mm -hmm. Okay? But the fact that, and the fact that he has the ear of the president and of, of Attorney General Holder, that should tell you something. This guy is horrible. And he uses... Uh, it's not necessary to name his name. Okay. I, I, I will tell you later. Okay. They know who I'm talking about. And I don't want to mention his name because I don't want... Because they know. They absolutely okay. know. Okay. And, Sorry. And so here's this guy. He's on this unwatched station on MSNBC. And he's calling out for us to have protests against the verdict in the Zimmerman trial. And if anybody watch and I want to say something too I thought I was gonna to have to come out here and 
pioneer this. I thought I was going to have to lead the, 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 the call on this, but over the past weeks, blacks are coming out and they are saying this was a case of self-defense. The jury spoke, they looked at the evidence, and this was the case. Do you want to know that just a week ago, a black guy shot a white teenager, and there was no whites in the street screaming bloody murder? Okay? Nobody said a word. Okay? So, and so the point that I'm trying to make is here is this guy, and the others like him, the race profiteers, the people that make money off of the civil rights issue, He's on TV on MSNBC. He's got a new car. He's got a nice. He's got all this money coming in, and I just seen a picture of him with some babe, some babe that would have never been with him, but for his TV show and his power. Okay, you got a babe? Did you get anything from doing this stuff for him, giving him support by coming to his rallies and doing the stuff that he calls out to do? You got nothing for it. You have been manipulated by this character and the others like him. Okay, and let's talk about how that works. And I'm, I'm sorry to rave on, but this is just something that's got oh, that's to, okay. it's, it's got to be said. You got to keep something in mind, folks. Life is not perfect. And listen, next week I'm taking care of the GOP. I blame them for some of this too. <laughs> this is just as much their fault as anybody else's. But let's, this, this week I want to speak to my, because listen, I got a lot of friends in, in the black community. Okay, and they're, they're just Americans like me. We're just Americans, okay? And, and, I got, and I got friends of every race and every ethnic background and every sexual preference that you can imagine. I mean, I, I, I deal with people all the time. I know them all, okay? And I don't like seeing anybody be manipulated for somebody else's personal gain. And that's what's happening now. Now, let me explain what I mean. What I mean is when somebody calls out, let's have protests in a hundred cities, and we're going to do this, that, and the other thing. Well, see, what you're not being told is this. He's getting a benefit from that that you're not, because he looks strong to his TV people. That looks great. That makes him look like he's got a following. But, okay, what's it do for you? It does nothing for you, because you're the ones that are giving your strength and your power uh, to this guy because you're coming out because he called you. So you have taken your strength, your solidity, the things that, 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 the gifts that you have, and you're making it look like he controls them. And he's now got a hot babe, and he's got a TV show, and he's got a lot of stuff. What do you got? You got nothing. You know what? You've lost two things by doing this. A, you've made it appear that this guy has power that you get nothing for. And you've made other people afraid, okay? Because when you come out and you do your protests, even if they're nice and they're peaceful and they're wonderful, there are people that misuse your protests and they infiltrate that protest. They go break windows and they go do this and they go do that. And you all get labeled with that violence. Those are the pictures that they put on TV. And I blame the media more than anybody for this, except these race profiteers that know how to use the media for the, because they know they like pictures. And if we can have a riot down here, that would be great. And you got a president and a Department of Justice that would love to see riots because then they could clamp down on everybody. They're already tap taping everybody and tracking us and watching us on TV and in our cars and every place. I mean, it's out of control, okay? So what happens if you go out and you do these protests and people that you may not even be affiliated with go out and do all this damage? You're seen as the people that are doing it. And you want to know something? You start looking like terrorists and you start making people scared. And I want to tell you something. If you frighten people, you don't get jobs. If you frighten people, you don't have no upward mobility because people are afraid of you. And that's not how you succeed in America. You succeed in America by working hard, doing what's got to be done, and moving up. Okay? And I was so happy to see in some of these rallies, these protests, just a few hundred people came out rather than 10,000. You know what that tells me? That tells me that more and more black folks are getting it every single day. Why should I do anything that makes this guy look important? Why should I do anything that makes this guy look strong when he's doing nothing for me? All he's doing is using me. And that's what this is about. I don't care what the color of your skin is. I don't care who you sleep with. I don't care what food you eat. You could even be vegetarians. What I don't like, I don't like being, I don't like being manipulated myself, and I don't like seeing other people manipulated. 
okay now let me tell you something when I lived as the wizard and I wore my pointed hat I wasn't black but I found out all about discrimination and I found all I, all, all I needed to know I didn't suffer like you folks did but the fact of the matter is <clears throat> I found out firsthand what it was like and what I'm trying to say to you is don't make these guys stronger okay because you get nothing for it but you get branded and you get and people get scared of you okay you don't like that you know how long the Italians had to live down the mafia when the untouchable show came on all of a sudden I mean and it changed and they started to change the show so it wouldn't just be Italians because what happened was everybody started getting scared oh I don't want to hire an Italian he might be with the mob okay now you have a greater cross to bear because you like the Asians and the, and the Hispanics are have visible differences but you know something? People care less and less and less and less about that every day that goes by unless you remind them, okay? And it's not your fault. It's these people above you. These people that went through this stuff, found out they could make a living, got their power and their stature from being the head of this organization, okay? These people had the audacity, I, don't, I shouldn't say they, because I don't know who did it. Somebody had the audacity to put Martin Luther King in a hoodie and make that a picture. Oh. That was not Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King Ping was a great and patient and, 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 and peaceful man who did more for race relations than anybody that we know, anytime, place, anywhere. And he did it the right way. And I'm not saying he did it the white way. I'm saying he did it the right way. He, was, he didn't allow himself to be manipulated. He didn't allow himself to be used as a pawn. Okay? <clears throat> and, and as far as this, 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 this George Zimmerman, Trayvon Martin thing, Trayvon Martin had three opportunities to go home. Three. Three times he could have walked away. All we keep hearing about on the news, because they are turning this up, and let me tell you something, if there ain't a white black man in the White House, then there ain't a white Hispanic called George Martin, because either they, George Zimmerman, because either they are both white something or they're not. So if Obama's a black, Zimmerman is a Hispanic. But that didn't fit the story. So we had to put that little white thing on there to, so, we could churn, you, so we could manipulate your feelings and your heart. You think there's nobody that's happy about this. George Zimmerman never confronted anybody. The whole time he was, uh, 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 the, when he does this, his whole life, he was never a confrontational guy. He was just a low-key guy who tried to do the best he could the way he could. Okay? He never confronted anybody. And he didn't confront Trayvon Martin either. He didn't want to. All he was, he called the police. He didn't go after him. Well, but the police told him to stay in the car and he I got out. know. What they said was that wasn't necessary. But they said that after they had asked him where he was. And he went out to look. And when they told him that they didn't have to do that, he was on his way back to the truck when Trayvon Martin confronted him. That was the second time. Mm -hmm. that, was the, that, was the, that was the second time Trayvon Martin could have left. When Trayvon Martin originally left, he could have gone home. He was that close. During that four-minute gap, he could have gone home. That would have been okay. <clears throat> and one of the things that did come out in the trial was all these texts and all these emails that Trayvon had about you, when you want to have a fight with somebody, you want to hit him in the nose first because that gives you an edge. And talking about fighting and all this stuff, nobody wants to talk about that because they got this illusion that if we, if, if we don't take responsibility for our actions, you know, it, it's okay. But it's not okay. That's another thing that demeans the black community. This guy did something. He made a mistake. Nobody in the world is happy about it. But it wasn't George Zimmerman's fault. Three times Trayvon Martin could have gone. You know when the third time was? After he hit George Zimmerman in the nose and knocked him down, all he had to do was turn around and walk away. George Zimmerman wasn't going to track. George Zimmerman was not out with a gun tracking him down. George Zimmerman had the gun. George Zimmerman allowed himself to be beat up for 45 seconds before he started hurting so bad he started being scared for his life. That's what the evidence shows. I'm not making this up. I never. T I don't tell lies. I got nothing to gain from this. What I don't want to see is you people being worked into a fever over something that's not true. You know Just like think? that black guy that shot that white teen. Okay? Sometimes that stuff happens. I think some of it <clears throat> is definitely the media pulling it... Putting it completely Making it a story. Of, yeah, because I... 
I, I know. I didn't watch the trial okay. as closely as I would have liked to. Um, but I could only take it back to, like, the Casey Anthony right. and the O.J. Simpson trial when, where I know that even I, I didn't even watch the, the trials closely then, but I remember watching reports saying, oh, this was brought to the judge's attention, this was brought to the judge's attention, but the jury wasn't in the room. Right. And that happens quite a lot. And so a lot of the stuff that we see on the televisions... Yeah, the jury doesn't know. Definitely, yeah. And I remember <clears throat> watching an interview with one of the O.J. Simpson jurors when, right. um, a couple of years later, and they said, had we been presented with the evidence that we saw that we that, finally found out that, about that was shown in the courtroom when we were not there right we would have she goes i would have changed it to him being guilty yeah, but, yeah. and then look goes, at that perfect on, example but based on what was we were allowed to see right. for whatever reason you know and so who knows you know how many times was the jury in the room and out of the room and things like that uh but definitely the media is playing a huge part into it and i'm I, i'm never <laughs> i'm really always like Kids. I don't always take everything you, you, you can't at just face try. value with the media. Here, but. This, I have two things. We, we, I don't think we'll get through them. We only got 20, we got about six minutes left. The, read this. Re, you know, re, you read this. Yeah, I want, I want read you to read this out loud. Yeah, I want you to read because I want the, I want people to understand how the media works. This is an example of how you're manipulated. This just happened, and you didn't. It didn't even make the news. Um, you won't recognize me. My name was Antonio West, and I was a 13-month-old child who was shot at point-blank range by two teens who were attempting to rob my mother, who was also shot. A grand jury of my mommy's peers from Georgia determined the teens who murdered me will not face the death penalty. Penalty. Too bad I was given a death sentence for being innocent and defenseless. My family made the mistake of being white in a 73% non-white neighborhood, but my murder was not ruled by a hate crime, nor did President Obama take so much as a single moment to acknowledge my murder. I'm one of the youngest murder victims in our great nation's history, but the media doesn't care to cover the story of my tragic demise. President Obama has no children who could possibly look like me, so he doesn't care, and the media doesn't care because my story is not interesting enough to bring them ratings so they can sell commercial time slots. Okay, now, because we're, because we're tight time-wise, I want to read what's on the other side of this. Oh, now. On the other side. Okay, so the point that we're trying to make is don't be manipulated. Don't allow yourself to be manipulated. I was so proud of the blacks that came out and accepted the... This is America. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, okay? And, uh, and you got to just accept it. You don't go and rally into the streets just because some guy on TV says, let's go out there and get justice for Trayvon, okay? He had justice. He had a fair trial. No, and, 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 and enough blacks know that and have admitted that. I and mean, every time I look around, more blacks and more blacks and more blacks and Asians and Latins are making progress and moving up the social ladder and everything else. Don't be allowed to be dragged back to the 60s. The 60s are over, okay, over. Save your protest. Save the strength that you have as a group. So Save it for something, save it for something real, something very, very worthwhile. This was a tragedy, everybody said so. Everybody also said race was not involved. So let me ask you this. How do you feel about the Voter Rights Act being, part of it being repealed about the states having, about Just certain because they paid their decisions. dues, they've changed. They, do, they no longer practice the things that they had practiced then. It's like, so let's talk about renewable energy. Renewable energy isn't going to be good for 10 no, years. I'm not no, I'm no, I know, energy. but I'm trying to say that you've got to stay within the time zone you're in. You were the one that said it. We talked about it on one show, and that was you can only do so much in so much time. Right. One generation can only accomplish so much. And when you've accomplished something, like the EPA, we don't need the EPA to do the things that it's doing now because we've become responsible. We have those states have changed. They have a higher black percentage of voters than they than, than, than they do think, whites. That was the whole purpose of it. I don't think that some of them have they changed. have take the take the time to look. I'm not saying that I, I'm not saying I'm saying that, that they that haven't changed. <clears throat> I think I think many have but yes. there's a couple that I'm concerned about. Well, but then check the record. These the, the justices made their basis based on the fact that times have changed. Mm -hmm. We have made progress. Now here, listen to this. Here, just listen to this. This is from a black guy. A, a, a black guy that every single buddy knows that I'm talking to. They're standing on the corner and they can't speak English. 
I can't even talk the way these people talk. Why you ain't, where you is, what he drive, what he stay, where he work, who you be. And I blame the kid until I heard the mother talk. And then I heard the father talk. Everybody knows it's important to speak English except these knuckleheads. You can't be a doctor with that kind of crap coming out of your mouth. In fact, you will never get any kind of job making a decent living. People marched <clears throat> and were hit in the face with rocks just to get an education. And now we've got these knuckleheads walking around. The lower economic people are not holding up their end of this deal. These people are not parenting. They are buying things for their kids. $500 sneakers for what? And they won't spend $200 for hooked on phonics. I'm talking about these people who cry when their son is standing there in an orange suit. Well, where were you when he was two? Where were you when he was 12? Where were you when he was 18? And how come you didn't know that he had a pistol? Where, where is the father? Or who is the father? People putting their clothes on backwards. Isn't that a sign of something going wrong? People with their hats on backwards, pants down around their crack. Isn't that a sign of something? Isn't it a sign of something when she has her dress all the way up and got all types of needles piercing going on through her body? What part of Africa did this come from? We are not Africans. Those people are not Africans. They don't know anything about Africa. They're Americans. That was Bill Cosby. And here's a guy who nobody handed anything to. He worked the whole time. There's more, but we're going to run out of okay. time. <clears throat> and the point that he's making is, don't be misled. Kids, I love you. You're all Americans to me. I don't see color. I could care less about color. One of the guys that I hold in my, in my heart the most is a guy, I won't tell you his name. He's an entrepreneur, and he's... he's I, he's out there and he's working hard and I see him every day and every place I look around I see every color of the universe and every sexual passage and you know what they're all working hard those are the people that get ahead don't give these race profiteers your strength because they're not giving you anything back for it but making people scared of you and that don't help you now here's a song and it's called Village Blue and thank you for allowing me to rant no problem Buy America, <laughs> do something good every day, and volunteer at your local animal shelter. Oh, man! Oh, this, see, this is good, because I, you know, I like this next song, all right? <laughs> now, listen, I used to play butcher. You guys should see a song. You know, when I played in a cafe a while, and, you know, I told you, you know, 18, 19 million, and retired at 25 months. Okay, so that's the head I was in. And then I was playing in a cafe a while. A couple years later, playing in a cafe a while. A couple years after, I was playing a gaslight. I moved across the street, you know, four years later. Now, instead of on this corner, I'm over here. It was really progress. Well, I'm a songwriter, and I care about my words, okay? The fact that you people are here tonight, there's no way I could ever repay you, okay? But, but that's what I cared about. And I'm in Greenwich Village now, four years. I'm living in the Broadway Central, and the stories I could tell you about that, but we won't go there. But the fact is, here I am in Greenwich Village. And I'm saying, yo, party, I need a lime Ricky out on table number four. And I'm up here singing my heart out there. Yo, and you know, well, that didn't work for me, okay? And after a while, I was uh, city-fied and nervous. Breathing in killer air Stumbling over the cracks In the street traveling But I don't know where And so I ask myself a question I say, son, do you know the way? Well, the answer's yeah. I'm only 55 and nervous when I'm So here I stand singing my song To one more bunch of people But do you 
you know my name And late at night, late at night when you come home and you're all wet Did you even realize it rained? So if you have not tried to find a way to help your fellow man well, don't break my heart, please I'm already citified and nervous And that's no way to be Well, every time I sing the song Someone's always sitting over there Telling us just what we can all do To get along But if he's so damn sure that he's got a way Why don't he just shut up You know we'll get along If I can just sing my song I'm only sitting by the news When I have to go alone So here I stand singing these songs To one more bunch of people But do you know my name? So please do not try to tell me that you died before your time has come And don't cry to me, mister, that you don't have a son Cause I'm already city-fied and nervous And it's only just begun Sitified and nervous And the whole thing's just begun And sung by The Wizard.